All right, so could this be the perfect and most underrated cycling specific gravel flat pedal shoe out there on the market? Find out what I think about the Pearl Azumi X Alp launch in this video. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel, this is the home of non-competitive cycling. So if you ride party pace and live the supple life, you found your people, hit that subscribe button. So as you guys know, I prefer to ride in flats when I go cycling. And in terms of options from the cycling industry, it is a wasteland. Road shoes get all the innovations, lots of cool lightweight knit uppers. However, all those shoes are essentially clipless because you know there's the assumption that if you're gonna ride road or gravel, you're probably gonna clip in. I think this is a big mistake. It's missing out on a big part of the market. On the other side of the spectrum, there are mountain bike shoes that are flat pedal specific, but they tend to be a little bit on the chonky side because they expect you to shred the nar nar. So typically big ankle cuffs, lots of padding, pretty overbelt, which makes sense in a mountain biking application, but too much shoe when you're thinking about road or gravel. That's why this shoe by Pearl Izumi is actually pretty interesting. It is designed as a mountain bike shoe, but it's not super overbuilt. And because of that, I think it makes a great candidate if you're looking for a flat pedal gravel shoe or bike packing shoe. Before we get into the shoe itself, my favorite part of the video, where I try to anticipate your comments. Yes, every shoe is a cycling shoe. Yes, I'm probably not gonna mention your favorite brand or type of shoe because I don't have the time or the money to do so, so forgive me. Some of you are gonna say, why does a lightweight flat pedal shoe matter? When we're not cycling, Laura and I do a lot of trail running and you can really feel the grams and ounces in that. So my obsession with a minimalist style cycling shoe definitely is influenced by other activities. And when you think about it, short of the wheels, which are constantly spinning, the shoes are probably one of the most important parts to shave weight uh, in your whole cycling system. One, it's attached to your body, so you always are cognizant of it. And two, you're constantly moving it around, just like your wheels. So while in the grand scheme of things, a couple grams here, a couple ounces here, doesn't make a difference to overall bike weight. I can definitely tell when I'm riding in a lighter shoe as opposed to a big clunky heavy shoe. What else did I miss? Oh yeah, yeah, they're kind of expensive. They're not free. Right, so let's jump into the shoe itself. Uh, first thing you'll notice is that it has a very sleek and minimal design, which I like. Also it helps cut down on the bulk. On the front of the shoe, it has a reinforced uh, rubber toe cup that helps with abrasion and just protecting your feet in the event of a crash. On the rear, it's got a really stiff and supportive heel cup. The top of the shoe has a thickish mesh, which I think strikes a good balance of breathability as well as general foot protection. One thing I really like about the shoe is that although it does have some kind of padding around the ankle cuff and in the tongue, they didn't go crazy with it. They could have gone a lot thicker, making it look like a 80s style basketball shoe. So I applaud their restraint here. It does give you some protection and a better fit without getting too crazy and puffy. It's got bow lacing, which you know I kind of have a love-hate relationship with. I'll get into that later in the video. The sole is a chevron pattern by Goodyear, and it's relatively soft, pretty grippy on the pedals that I've tried it with. In terms of flexibility, it does air a little bit on the stiff side, which I'm generally okay with on a bike using flat pedals because you do want that kind of support for your foot. Another thing I really like about this shoe is that it actually feels wider than most other cycling specific shoes I've tried. A shoe to compare it with is this cycling specific shoe from uh, Chrome, which I like a lot of things about it, but I find that it's too narrow and my foot spills over uh, the, the sole. It just kind of bulges over. Not so with the Pearl Azumis, it's got a pretty wide and stable platform. In terms of weight on our scales, this weighs in at about 370 grams, which is pretty good for a mountain bike cycling shoe. Just to give you a frame of reference, this 510 shoe here, which is actually a size smaller, uh, weighs in at 396 grams, so almost 400 grams. Chrome shoe here, again, cycling specific, weighs in at a little bit of a chonky 400 grams. All that to say that the Pearl Izumi shoes, when compared to other cycling specific flat pedal shoes, are pretty light, but not as light as this guy. This is the Astral shoe, which I reviewed a couple weeks ago, and this weighs in at, I think, about 300 grams. So for a cycling shoe, pretty dang good, uh, you know, relative to lightweight trail runners, could still lose a little bit of weight. But generally speaking, I appreciate the restraint that they exercise in the shoe. 
They could have gone a lot puffier, a lot bulkier, but they kept their pretty felt, which is nice. So this shoe arrived pretty late in the season and we've already got snow here in Montana. So I was only able to take it out on one real gravel ride. But I'd say within that one ride, uh, this has quickly become my favorite cycling specific shoe. I appreciate the minimal bulk, it's general light weight. The supported sole, it's, it's generally pretty grippy. I feel like it could be better. It's not quite as grippy as the soft sticky rubber in a 510 shoe, but it's, it's pretty good. Reading reviews on the shoe, that was probably the biggest complaint. Uh, a lot of people said it wasn't tacky enough or secure enough when doing technical mountain biking, and I can totally see that. But for a road and gravel application where you're not, you know, hitting big jumps or something, these actually work pretty well. Let's talk about the bow laces really quick. Some people love them, uh, some people dislike them. I'm kind of ambivalent. I do appreciate how quick and easy it is to tighten and loosen the shoe. I used to own a pair of uh, fishing wading boots with bow laces and I found over time they would kind of loosen up uh, on the fishing session. I've not ridden this long enough to see if that happens on the bike ride, but that is one thing to consider. Another thing about bow laces, no pun intended, is that they're a little bit trickier to dial in the fit. And by that, I mean with traditional laces, there are actually a couple of lacing tricks that you can apply. You can skip eyelets to really customize the fit of your shoe. With a bow lace, everything tightens uniformly. So if for whatever reason you wanted a little bit more room in the toe box, that's just not an option. Fortunately, however, they do have a traditional lace version of this shoe. So what are my likes and dislikes with the Pearl Izumi X Alp launch? Uh, first big like is the aesthetics. It's very minimal, not just in styling, but also in terms of padding and general material on the shoe. They could have made it way bulkier, but they really restrained themselves with this one. I do like the boa laces because there aren't any loose laces uh, flopping about. That's probably my biggest complaint with this Astral shoe or using non-cycling shoes for cycling in general is that there's no you know, lace garage or something to, to capture the loose lace built in. Not a problem with the bow shoe, obviously. Another huge like, and I can't really emphasize this enough, is that I like that it's not overbuilt. It also has a wider toe box when compared to other cycling shoes, which is a big plus. And overall, it remains a relatively light package in terms of flat pedal cycling shoe. So those are the likes. What are the dislikes? Uh, first, first dislike is the rubber compound. Uh, it's pretty good. I'm not going to say it's trash, but when compared to something like the soles on the 510, I do find those a little bit grippier. So I'd love to see this upgraded with a tackier sole material. And that's actually about it. Like I said, this has to be one of my favorite cycling specific flat pedal shoes out there that I've tried. If there is one thing I'd love to see is have this shoe developed specifically for gravel and road purposes. I think this would be a big bold move by Pearl Izumi if they developed a gravel specific version of this shoe. What would that look like? I'd love to see them trim a little bit more fat from the shoe in general. Maybe keep the toe protection, keep the heel cup, but reduce the padding around the ankle collar by about half. Also the tongue could lose a little bit of this uh, padding here and also add a gusset to the tongue so it keeps smaller pebbles out, that annoying pea-sized gravel, as well as a stickier rubber compound. And if that happened, this shoe would be just about perfect for gravel and road. But that's what I think. What do you guys think? Have any of you guys tried this line of shoes from Pearl Azumi? Again, I want to stress that I've had very limited time with this shoe. So I'm going to do a longer term review in the spring once I could put more miles on it. But so far, just from that one ride, this has quickly become my favorite cycling specific shoe out there. And if you want to nerd out more about uh, shoes for cycling, you definitely want to subscribe because I'm currently working on a video about cycling in boots for fall and winter. It's a video you don't want to miss because I try about a half dozen boots for cycling and give you my thoughts on it. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon. And as always, keep the supple side down.